Uh, good evening, comrade subscribers. Hope you're all well. Um, just a quick update as things have started to uh, started trickling in. Uh, I've got um, I've got the power supply for the 8-inch floppy drive. It's just a mean well. Um, outputs 5 volts and 24 volts DC, so 5 volts for the logic, 24 volts for the electromechanics. So I'll make up a little power supply uh, enclosure for that. Um, uh, Mr. Volkman um, found another Koike solenoid. So these are impossible to find. So he managed to find one. It's not the exact same model. But it's very, very close um, to the one for the, for the trackhead. So if you remember, this was frozen solid. It just would not move. But after, um, <laughs> after five, six weeks of just soaking, I managed to get it free. So um, it's, um, it's quite a tight fit, actually. So you can see that it's, it goes down slowly. But that's because it is, it's, it's a very tight fit. Um, this one's a lot freer because it's got a plastic. Yeah. So it's almost, you could almost replace one with the other. The holes kind of line up. The only problem is that this uh, crossbar here is just a little bit too thick for the, for the arm. Um, so it goes in like this and it's just a little bit too thick and I've already had to re-glue these two plastic parts there that had broken so I'm a bit, a bit reluctant to put too much pressure on but basically it goes in like that screws onto there and then the solenoid activates like that so I'll probably give it a bit more lubrication but otherwise it is I think ready to ready to go so I just need to reattach it like that and it goes in there um, and then I just yeah I need to also reattach the wires I had to cut the wires because um, I couldn't I wouldn't be able to get it out otherwise so let me put all that back together so yeah thank you very much Mr. Walkman for finding that and um, sending it on to me. I know it wasn't cheap, so I do appreciate it. I'll definitely be keeping that because <laughs> these are very hard to find. Um, so power supply, um, some of the logic on here, you know, we've got rusty legs and things like that. So there was a couple of, of buffers um, that looked a bit flaky. So they've finally come in, replacements. Uh, SN 75462 and SN 75472, so dual peripheral buffers and line drivers. So I've got some of those in case I need to. No idea what, what the logic's going to do, if it's going to work or not. Of course I've got the um, 50 pin to 40 pin converter there that goes on here. Actually, the next thing is uh, to get a PC up and running so I can actually use it. So, what's the pinning? It doesn't say. That's pin 50 on this side. And is that pin 1 there? So that would go on like that, I guess. Like that. I think that's the way it would go. But anyway, I'll, I'll double, double do some more checking. Um, so, yep, yeah, so power supply, some spares for that. So, yeah, hopefully this will be ready to <laughs> try. <laughs> See if it blows up or whatever. So that's, that's that. Let me just clear all this away. And the other bits is I've got some uh, electrolytics for... Um, few bits and pieces. One of them is the, uh, the Electronica. Electronica TV. I think this was the replacement for this 
for this one here, for this huge, was it two, 2,000, 50 volts. So, um, we've got 2,250 volts. So <laughs> that's kind of <laughs> a replacement. So I know it's been said that you can empty this out and you can put the Western part in there, and but I, I actually prefer to keep the part like this. Um, so I'll probably just be sticking that on there or something. And um, yeah, so that's that's kind of going to be in progress. Going to get back to the TV. Um, now the Nabu. Of course. I thought I'd ordered the power supply and I, I forgot, didn't I? I ordered everything else. So, um, but one part is getting an Australian 240 volt power supply because the Nabu requires plus five volts and plus minus 12 volts. But the other thing I wanted to do is um, mount the, um, so we've got the RS422 converter here and to USB. And I, instead of having a plugging a DIN cable into it, I wanted to kind of internalize this. So remove the, the DE9 uh, plug, remove the USB cabling here, and I've got this here. So this would go on to drill a hole. I know, sorry, dislike the video now. But drill a hole in one of the um, panels on the back, screw that on, and then chop this end off here and wire it into there and then obviously this so I might actually do this tonight maybe yeah yeah I might do that tonight um, so that was just a quick update so yeah I'm, I'm yeah I'm gonna get back to other stuff oh, I got a weird comment on one of my Prevets videos today um, so I don't mind constructive feedback constructive criticism but when you just try to be nasty, it's like, yeah, I'm not interested. So um, apparently I really am clueless because I um, called the Prevets a Czechoslovakian computer, which kind of confused me because the video title says it's a Bulgarian Auric Atmos clone. The first sentence of the video description, which I know a lot of people don't read the description, but the, you, you can see the description, the first sentence at least, says that it's a Bulgarian Auric Atmos clone. And the thumbnail says it's a Bulgarian computer with um, communist era Bulgarian flag. So, but apparently I'm clueless because apparently I'm calling this computer Czechoslovakian. So I may have referred to that when I first opened it, not knowing what it is. <laughs> not many of them in Australia, my friend. Um, but certainly, anyway, weird. So, um whatever so let's I think maybe should this be a separate video let me stop and let me think no I saw it let's uh, let's do this so got to work tonight I'll go back to Tahiti in May right so what I want to do is chop this off Okay, and strip it. Let's try this just to strip the outer. Okay. Will that be enough, I wonder? And that's the inner conductors. So I'm assuming that they, that this is a standard color, standard colors for a USB, I'm assuming. So it should just be a matter of doing that and then doing that for the shielding. Um, okay. Back, 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 back. Okay, so I've just removed the existing cable. Um, 
just wondering if that's going to be long enough. Well, I think it should be. I'll just tend, tend that. So that's just the um, the outer braid. So for these ones, I think just just I just need a little bit off the end. I think that's probably just going to be enough. Just a little bit off the end and then tin it and then hook it on. I guess I could, I probably could have made the cable a bit shorter as well, but uh, I think this is probably gives me enough. Yeah. All right, so let me finish this off. So I'll finish pulling, um, stripping these and then tinning them and then put them on there. Okay, almost done. Dinner's ready. All right. Close up the hand, so just I know it's not a very professional job, but it's good enough for me. Okay. Um, so there we go. So now we've got a uh, USB Type B, which is normally. Uh, you'd have it sort of thing i guess um and then i'll just remove this and then connect the relevant wires to the din socket somehow internally and um then that goes on the panel i was, I was actually going to maybe mount that on the panel as well with these two screws here put some tape over there and yeah that's the idea anyway all right dinner's been had so I think for this end, just chop it off, I reckon. Now it's pretty close to the board. Actually, I need to get new, new snips. But I don't really need the connector. I've got enough connectors, DE9 connectors. So I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to chop it off. And then... And then the tabs will come off a bit easier, I think. Okay, looks like I can just hopefully wiggle it, wiggle it just a little bit, or, or actually can I lever it off, can I just lever it off and the pins will go through maybe, maybe that's what it's doing, maybe, maybe, yeah there we go, okay there we go. All right. So actually, yeah, you could have probably just gently levered it off and just pulled it off the front. I'll just snip these off. And then uh, solder them off. Need to clean up my iron. You didn't see that. <laughs> you didn't see that bit. <laughs> All right. Okay, just tidying up the solder pads. Okay, 
that's done. Let's turn the iron off so it's all ready to it's all ready to go now in the nabu. Nabu nabu. Not the nabu or the nabu, it's the nabu. Let's move the port. Yep. So you, that's kind of what I wanted to do. I thought maybe that might be a more interesting way of doing it. And then you can just plug your normal kind of printer cable into it on the outside with, hey, <laughs> so I could <laughs> just jam those together and then, uh, yeah, book up to the computer that way, reuse that. So that's the plan. All right, I need some rest because I have to work tonight. But um, power supplies for the Nabu are coming from the UK, so be a couple of weeks. Uh, maybe here, I'm not sure yet. Anyway, bye for now.